there you are, John German, getting ready to set out for the day's work. You don't know it yet, but I'll be going along too. Yep, that's right. I'll watch to see how well you do your job. You and some of the others that work along with you. Sure, you wonder who I am. I don't blame you. Let me tell you, I'm that voice inside you you've heard before, even when you were a kid. Your father? Could be. Your teacher? Yes, in a way. And all the good people who helped give you a conscience. Okay, Patrolman German, I'll play it straight. I'm the guy you want to be. You're a real career cop, aren't you? Everything's going well in the department. A few years more, then promotion to sergeant, for sure. Well, after all, the captain seems to like my work. A few more years, if I keep it up, I should make sergeant. But a lot of other guys in the department are bucking for the same job. And they don't have some of the headaches I have. Mary's been giving me a real hard time lately. Seems like I can't do anything right. And odd jobs. Why don't you fix the sink? And the porch steps? And Johnny's bike? Johnny, that reminds me. Gotta have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with that boy. He'd better get up if he hopes to get into college. And always getting into another fight with a Garcia kid. Why always that Garcia kid? Those Spanish-Americans are natural troublemakers, I guess. Yep, I'd better have a talk with Johnny tonight. Now, Gearman, there you are on your beat. The neighborhood you should know, like the palm of your hand. Everything's smooth and quiet. People know that uniform you wear. Even strangers know they can count on you for help. And you do the best you can, even answering a simple question. But what about the people who live on your beat? What do they think of you? When they say or think, here comes the law, what's their attitude? Well, most of them sort of take me for granted. But they like me, I, I think. The others, some of them aren't so crazy about me, but I try to treat them fair, just because I do represent the law. Well, we'll see. You've got a surprise waiting for you when you turn that corner. I hope you've forgotten for now about Johnny and that Garcia kid. Look at that. I hassle to break up. Another Spanish-American kid. Man, they're sure troublemakers. I should let them get pasted good. Might teach them a lesson. Hold on, Gearman. You don't know who started it. Why do you think he might have a knife? He's only a kid. You're treating him like he's Murder Incorporated, putting him down in front of his neighbors, too. Oh, come on. They're all tough, and they're the same when they get older, shouting their heads off, knifing each other. Hell, they can't even speak good English. Oh, come now. You know better than that, Gearman. If that's your thinking, you can forget those sergeant stripes. Approach your job like the professional you are. No bias, no prejudice, no favoritism. Yeah, I should have treated both of them the same. Better watch myself, keep my emotions out of my work. But it's not always easy. I don't think we have to worry about Gearman. He's a good cop, trying to be a better one. That's the way to make sergeant. Take Officer Muccioli now. Look at this rundown neighborhood. You'd think these colored people would take better care of their part of town. Hold it, Muccioli. First of all, probably half of those houses are owned by white people who don't think they have to keep up their property. And most of the folks in this neighborhood are poor. But that doesn't mean they like to live in a semi-slum. They just can't help it. Yeah, come to think of it, I know a lot of mighty nice Negroes. The ones we have in the department. Even Sergeant Brown is a real good Joe. That's better. If you put yourself in their shoes for a minute, you'd understand better just how they feel about you. Some of them have some prejudice, just like yours. Prejudice that started when they were kids and through poverty and discrimination has become a habit of thinking, just like yours. It's up to you to realize this. But how about Dooling? Another good cop trying to do his best, but he has a short fuse. There you go, Dooling. You sure caught that one right in the act. Bad enough passing a stop sign, but now he adds a speeding violation. Let's go. Oh, you knucklehead. You should be able to read that four-letter word. Stop it, says. An eraser, too. When I think of what you smart Alex do to other people, not just the stiffs in the morgue, the broken bodies, the torn faces, the little kids, Ah, all thanks to guys like you. Well, I'll teach you a lesson. I'll throw the whole book at you, and then a little bit more. Oh, 
Hold it, Dooling. I know how you feel. Sure, the fellow was wrong. He admits it. And he was endangering himself and others. He'll know it when he stops to think. But that's no excuse for you to flip. That uniform you're wearing, it's not a license to act like an avenging angel. It's a responsibility to live up to. Of course he broke the law, and he ought to pay for his mistake. But that doesn't mean you can push him around. Play it cool, Dooling. Let's go back and try it again. Same guy, same violations. There's one of those damn scarf laws again. Man, this is the thankless part of the job. You arrest a stick-up man, a rapist, or a murderer, and you feel you've done something. At least there's one less of them around for a while. But these guys, all they seem to learn is to ignore the rules. They never learn that we're looking out for their safety. Same guy, same anger on your part, but this time, he's going to flip. Had a fight with his wife, lost an order. Anyway, he's all primed to blast at someone, and you're it. See what I mean? Right off the bat. Never mind how many lives he endangered, he takes it out on me. Who's breaking the law anyhow? Him or me? Do I have to take this kind of abuse? But now look at you. A fine performance you're putting on. Just the kind that gives the whole department a black eye. Sure, you're human too, so you let him get you mad. Now you're as bad as he is, in fact, worse. Why don't you slap the bracelets on him and pull him in? And then what story do you give the desk sergeant? This is the tough part, Dooling. Of course you feel some righteous indignation. His breaking of the law is just the same. His reaction this time is belligerent and even threatening. So he knows the mayor or the councilman. Sure, he'll bust you out to the boondocks. Let's try it once more, Dooling. You don't get this chance in real life, of course, but after all, this is a movie, isn't it? These rich characters and their fast wheels, where do they learn to drive anyhow? Stop signs mean nothing, speed limits mean nothing, just reckless. Look at him, will you? He could cause a wreck, get us into an accident. Why do I have to stick my neck out for him? I could get killed. Well, now, You've built up a good resentment. I must say, I can't blame you too much. Now, how are you going to handle this? Are you going to give the wrong impression? Act like a guy with a strong back and a weak mind? Yeah, that's what nuts like this expect. You have to ignore it, that's all. It's not always easy. Ah, that's better. Dignity, authority, quiet control of your emotions. That's what impresses people. Believe me, he'll hate himself in the morning. Maybe he'll be a little ashamed of himself when he has a chance to cool off. Maybe he'll remember that you made him look pretty small. You were really in charge of that one, Dooling. Congratulations, even if it did take a couple of tries. I don't think Dooling will boot it the next time. He knows how to handle himself. Just had to curb a tendency to blow his stack. And sometimes, just because most people figure police can take care of anything, we get some pretty petty and irritating interruptions. Take this little lady in the desk, Sergeant. Yeah, her electricity's been cut off. Her garbage has been collected. I tell her she should see her power company and call the sanitation department. And please not to take up my time when I have plenty of police work to do. I wish she wouldn't bother me. Of course you're right, Sergeant. But hold on to that irritation. Try to answer her question. Help her if you can. Treat her politely and patiently. After all, it's sort of a compliment, isn't it? The fact that she thinks you can handle anything could be an indication of how she respects the police. And that's what you really want, isn't it? Well, you've done your best, Sergeant. It's time you got back to that police work. She can be ushered out with tact and politeness. But thank goodness, sometimes, mixed in with the headaches, there's a chance to be a hero in the community. When people need an officer, everybody is only too glad to find one. You're that kind of symbol too, you know. You don't hesitate. It doesn't matter to you who or what the kid is. You see your duty and you do it. 
This is the kind of action that brings respect for the police, that influences the attitudes of a community. Keep in mind, most people are on your side, trust you, respect you, depend on you. Same idea here, officer. A neighbor's complaint on a radio call brought you into this. Just a family argument that got a little out of hand. So I break it up and cool off the brothers. These Latin sure fly off the handle easy. Does the mother want to lodge a complaint? No, that's good. Right. No sense in hauling the boys out of there in front of all the neighbors. That's important. Don't make the kids look bad where they live. You must use good judgment. Your job is to keep the peace. There's enough trouble and violence when you have to deal with real troublemakers and lawbreakers. Now you're helping to promote respect and confidence in the police. If you take the trouble to get to know these people, you can learn a few things. For instance, why they get together on the street so much. It seems that's the way of life down in Latin countries, outdoors a lot of the time, walking around the town square, chewing the fat. Here, what have they got? A couple of rooms maybe, maybe only one, bulging with kids, and do they love kids? So where else can they go? Where else can they have a get-together? Loitering? No, just living. Yes, getting along with people is a big part of your job. And that means all people. Take this, a little harmless horseplay, a bit of roughhousing. It has to be cooled off, of course. Sometimes just the appearance of a police car will do the job. Anyway, we're not going to make a federal case out of it. An understanding, friendly word to the boys. A slight reprimand with an understanding smile. That's the word, understanding. This kind of thing could turn into trouble, of course, but probably not. You could pull them in for loitering or some other minor charge, but what would that accomplish? Add a boy a little tolerant understanding when no real crime is being committed is a pretty good rule. But sometimes things heat up a bit. This time a crime, stealing hubcaps. A guy caught in the act with a potentially dangerous weapon. Of course you have to disarm him and subdue him, but just a moment. It seems you're on trial before an impromptu neighborhood court. I'm on trial? He had the weapon. True, you were doing your job and using only the necessary amount of force. But remember, to some people, you represent the enemy. Their hostility is directed at you only as a symbol of authority. That's why we have to try to help the rest of the community understand us and our job. Look at this. Police brutality? Not at all. You know that when you interrupt a holdup, nab two men, and one of them doesn't submit to search, you gotta use force. Yes, enforcing the law sometimes means just that, force. But someone who comes in late sees just part of the action, and by passing along what he saw can seriously distort facts. Suppose someone snapped this picture. It sure gives the wrong impression, doesn't it? That's why we cops sometimes get a bad deal from the press. It really isn't the reporter's fault, but the damage is done. Well, that's why we get a headline like this. Or this. Sorry, but uh, that's an unfortunate part of our job. Yes, people can get the wrong impression. Word of mouth can be exaggerated. Rumors spread. Emotions heat up, resentments take over, crowds gather, protests are staged. You know what that can lead to? Unnecessary roughness on your part can touch off a spark. A spark becomes a flame, and then a roaring inferno. That's why it's so important, officer, that you handle even the smallest occurrence like the professional you are. If you're cool, careful, and capable, you can stop bigger trouble before it starts. Your handling of the first episode determines whether there will be a temporary flare-up or an explosion. There's another important part of community relations, dealing with people in organized groups. There's no age limit on that. Take youngsters, bicycle safety, the rules of the road, pedestrian safety. We want to keep them alive and unhurt and we teach them how to protect themselves against stealing and against neighborhood bullies. 
and adult civic groups, even social groups. Higher ranks of the police department should also play their parts. Citizens want to know what you're doing to protect them. Thievery, burglary, vandalism, even local riots. Your attitudes, procedures, communication systems, and their responsibilities too. Locked cars, lights in empty premises, alertness. You know what to tell them. And special meetings too. Called by your department or by some community leader. Working and planning with these people and with minority spokesmen. Maybe church leaders, YMCA officials. You welcome their interest. Let them understand that you and the department are doing your best to do your part, but that you can't do it all. They have their responsibilities too. Fair employment practices, housing integration, slum improvement, equal treatment in stores, public accommodations, juvenile guidance, community communications, based on community understanding. All right, men, let's get on with the roll call. Gehrman. Here. Dooling. Here. Muccioli. Yeah. I think you have a better understanding of one part of your job now. What good community relations consist of? Those prejudices that many of us have, sometimes pretty well hidden down deep. Get them out and take a look at them, and get rid of them. Sanchez. Here. Kelly. Here. Glagowski. Here. Those personal problems and difficulties, don't bring them along on your job. Try to solve them yourself. Don't take them out on some well-meaning citizen. And those citizens who have problems of their own, and try to take them out on you, don't flip your lid with them or you'll be as bad as they are. Swenson? Yeah. Cohen? Yeah. A cry for help, an accident, an overt crime. Well, you've been trained to cope with those situations. It's the more complicated ones you have to watch out for. Yes, each separate individual one of you is the police department. That uniform you wear demands the very best that's in you, and it's your responsibility to do it proud. Remember, Cool, confident, in charge every minute, but also understanding, tolerance, consideration. They're also part of the job. We're all counting on you. Klaus? Yeah. Jones, book a T. Yeah. And just plain Jones. Present. Hmm. There's one in every crowd. <laughs>